talking to you. There you see the White Creek Band, one of the best bands in the mid-state. Pat, what do you think of their performance thus far? Well, they're leading a good show into the night's nice ball game, Taylor. They opened up on a positive note for the Cobras, but uh, the Big Red's got a strong student section to try to oppose them. You know, Pat, White's Creek chose to go with their blue uniforms as opposed to the traditional home white uniform. I think it's an intimidation factor. How do you think that's going to affect the Big Red tonight? Taylor, blue, white, orange, yellow, a fuchsia, black. It doesn't matter. The Big Red is tough, and they can overcome. I'm agreeing with you on that one, Pat. Also, I heard him doing a lot of grunting and such vocal intimidation during their stretching, pregame stretching in the direction of the NBA players. How do you think that affected our ball club? I don't think it affected them, Taylor. I think that speech uh, at assembly today uh, gave the Big Red a lot of ferocity. And uh, I think the Big Red's going to come out with some grunting of their own. Going to put them in the dirt and say, pick them up. I'm going to say, I'm going to do it again. Exactly. To quote Fred Fisher. Um, you done? Okay. You know, the White Creek Ball Club, I'm predicting a different kind of game for the Big Red tonight. White Creek's kind of flashy, a little razzle-dazzle. I'm predicting a little of that from the Big Red. One player that's been kind of quiet to me is Chris Johnston. He's been kind of quiet this year, Pat. And I'm expecting big things out of him tonight. I'm calling that Chris Johnston is going to run a reverse or a reverse pass, maybe even a pitch to Johnston for the pass. I think we'll have Chris Johnston throwing the ball at least once tonight. Well, you know, Taylor, the rookie's been coming into his own this year. Uh, he needed last year to get seasoned up in JV. But uh, this year they really haven't utilized him to his full potential. But uh, this week in practice they've been putting in some trick plays, and I look forward to seeing them use today. We'll be back with the kickoff. <clears throat> okay, we're here tonight. There comes the big red onto the field. Um, captains, D. Thompson. Uh, Robert Eccles, uh, their covers are getting ready to come through their little tunnel. It's not, definitely not as long as the NBA tunnel uh, at home. There aren't many people, they don't have much support. Don't look like they're very fired up. I think we'll beat them. Okay, we're here tonight. The Big Red has lost the toss or they deferred, so Pat Harker will be kicking off to White Creek, and there's the kick. Nice kick. Looks like it's going into the end zone. It goes to the one. They got some. They got some blocking, but he's brought down about the 24-yard line. Nice coverage by the Big Red. White Creek lined up with two guys split wide left. Cersei at quarterback. Hands off up the middle. Long run of about. 12 yards by Jamison. Not much defense by the Big Red there, Pat. I think the Big Red is just a little overwhelmed by the uh, ban and just everything right now, but I look to them to uh, settle down and start playing good sound defense. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're a little nervous probably right now uh, getting the pregame jitters out. I think after that we'll, we'll settle down and we'll start holding them. Try the same play, nothing there. The Brian Bleeker gets in the backfield. I believe he tripped over the quarterback foot on that one, and uh, if he did, then he's pretty much a full while. Yeah. Uh, flag, I think it was all sides on the Cobras, holding against the Cobras, excuse me. Uh, that'll push him back 10 yards. It'll be first and 10. 20 here for the Cobras. Same formation with two split, wide left. They try to hand off up the middle. There's not much there. I think after that first play that, that the Big Red has got their jitters out, Robert Eccles and Aiden Lauren on the tackle. Okay, we got two in the backfield, only one split left. They try the quick pass to number 86. Complete to Winfrey, down to the 40-yard line. And that'll make it third and seven. That's the type of quickness and explosiveness that the White's Creek team is going to have to look for tonight, and uh, hopefully they're, they'll get, they're looking to get one of those plays uh, 
for a touchdown, but the Big Red defense is just going to have to stay tough, strong, and smart, and they'll hold them. Okay, we got uh, split wide in the running sheet. Good throw. It looks like I think it's going to be a hole. That's the interception by Glenn Harris. He's got some room. Makes a cutback. There's a hole, so a lot of the White Creek people stop. Terrible pass by their quarterback. He threw right into the hands of Harris, who made a great run back. Made a nice cut to get a few extra yards. There's a flag on the play, but I believe the penalty is on White Creek, Al. I think it is. I think it's a hole that we were putting a heavy rush on the Cobras and it forced them to throw air at pass and Glenn, Glenn Harris picked it off and ran it back about 15 yards, Pat. Big play of the game. Uh, that could give us the momentum. We're in the in the wishbone. Hand off out the middle to Chris. He gets about four or five yards. Just going to run it straight out and see if they have the strength to stop us. We probably opened up every game with a run to Vallejo's up the middle wide. What do you think? I think we have it. We're trying to test the defense, their interior defensive line against our, defense, or against our offensive line and see what we can do. Hand off again to Vallejo's up the middle. He gets about four more. Looks like it's going to be third and two. You know, I think sending Vallejo's up the middle just sets the tone for the night. Big Red can grind it out against this Cobra defense. And uh, looks like we got a third and two short yardage situation. Let's look for the gold bone. Okay. Probably go up the middle of the Vallejo's again here. They may be looking for it, though, so we may, may pitch it to Eccles. We do get to Vlaos, and he looks like he has enough for the first down. Looks like he got about three. Three really nice runs for Chris, straight up the middle. They have not held him so far, Alex. He's getting three or four in each run, and if we can do that all night long, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, we're really pu uh, pushing them back. Doesn't look like they can stop. They can hold up to our line. We got a pretty big line. So today, it looks like ours is just stronger. Taylor calls pass. You gotta hate that for the White Creek team, Alex. First they get the interception, then the NBA comes right back with a first down. Let's see what happens on this play. Hand off again to Chris. Play off again, right off that looks like he got about six that time. I sense a pattern here. There was a real big hole on the left side of the line. The Brian Bleeker and, and someone else on the left side of the line, they're doing a really good job. Second down and four for the Big Red. We still have yet to run it to someone besides Vallejos. And D keeps this one. He gets about three. Looks like it'll be third and one. They have not stopped Vallejos. I think we'll run it to D. <laughs> he's close to the first down. I believe he's got it. We got the handoff to Eccles. That keeps it for three. Down to about the six. I think that that pitch shows it. If we pitch, try to pitch the ball, the White Street can run and get it. Robert cuts back up the middle. Nice hesitation with the fake to Vallejo. Hand off to Robert. He got about five out. I think we established that play to, to Vallejo. And White Street's really keying on it now, so we fake to them and just draw them together. But we have to watch the pitch because they have a lot of speed, so it's hard for us to get outside the corner on them. Gold bones here for the Big Red. They get to Eccles, hit by number 66. Real fired up, but we're driving on you. We may just have to do something to vary up this offensive scheme out. We've run it pretty much every time, or we have run it every time. And we just need to vary it up a little bit and get them off guard. It's time out to talk about the strategy to get it into the end zone. Gives it to go ahead on fourth and one, just as he did against Ryan. We'll see how effective it proves to be today. Give to D. Thompson around the end. It's going to be close. I don't think he made it, Wad. I have to question that call. We've been getting four to six yards with Vallejos every time. I think he had a lot of room there. It would go to the, the keeper with D. I think Cobra's defense just has too much speed for that. Big emotional boost for the Cobra defensive squad, Alex. I think Coach Joe would assume that they'd be expecting Chris when really they were just waiting there and D just ran right to him and they got him. Right. We 
Toe. He came away empty, but it's got to be really uplifting for the Big Red. It proves that they can drive on the Cobra defense, and we'll see if the Cobra offense can do the same on the Big Red defense. It's a really big defensive stand right here. Philander Jones. Hold on, Philander Jones to about one. This is a big, big defensive stand for the Big Red. If they can hold them here, then, then that fourth down conversion or lack of does not really mean much to us. Second and eight for the Cobras, deep in their own territory. Hand off up the middle. Nothing doing. Nothing, Hale. They're just not getting anything, and they're going to have to do something quick before we get really good field position. I think the Big Red took some notes from the Cobra goal line stance. They seem to be pulling together one of their own, and I look for Cobras to fail on this third down attempt right here. It's third down and five. And it's a handoff again up the middle. He broke it. He broke it. He just broke through. Where are our linebackers, Pat? Well, I, didn't, I don't think we have any linebackers on the field. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, who's that? Beckles, Crawford. <laughs> this is in that linebacker. The announcer keeps calling him Eric Crawford. He's really messed up. He needs a roster or something. Oh, almost tripped up. Brooks comes through with a nice hit. Tackled him, stopped him right in the midair. Where everybody else just leaped on him, Pat, and they didn't get anything on that one. We're looking at about second. Let, let's call it eight. You can just see the fire in the big red on that play, Taylor. We want this game. That long run made them kind of mad, and they came back with a vengeance. Here's Al. I think we're, we're taking over the Cobra style. I think we're talking a little to them and intimidating them a little bit. Second and nine. Two backs for the Cobras, handoff up the middle. He's hit, I think it was Poe, just bounced off the center there and met that guy head on. Third and six for the Cobras. Big play here, Pat Hale, big play. Echo's showing blitz. Nothing doing, no dice. They're gonna punt, Hale. Good field position for the Big Red. Well, you know that's true, and uh, we got Channel 4 here with us tonight looking for some highlights. Uh, I think Glenn Harris may just have what it takes to make this punt return a highlight. I think he made it already with the uh, interception, Pat, and yes, he probably could do with the punt return. Hunter Conley is not with us tonight. He's windy gapping. He's road tripping to windy gapping. I believe there's a freshman girl involved. I'm not sure. I have to ask Pat. Well, you know, that's true, Taylor. Uh, I believe Hunter, who is 17, is uh, going to Windy Gap with a 14-year-old freshman. I'm not, I'm not sure about the uh, what the consequences of this weekend are going to be. We'll find out later on Monday. He's definitely robbing the cradle, and we'll get back to you with an update on that one. Back to punt. Glenn Harris deep for the big red. Blinker on his way through. It's a short punt. Don't field it, Glenn. Just let it go. Good decision. We're looking at the ball on the NBA 32-yard line. Big red, first and 10. It's first and 10 for the big red. I'm looking for us to throw the ball more on this series, Pat. What do you think? I believe you're right. Of course here, Coach Owen, the uh, coaching staff seems to have wisened up. They're going back to Blaze at the middle, and uh, it's been pretty effective so far. Zero to zero after the first quarter of play. Pat, it's proved to be a close ball game thus far. What do you think? Well, that's proven to be a cl to uh, yeah, close ball game. Close ball game, Taylor. Thank you. Uh, I think the Big Red has a little advantage. I think, though, uh, a lot of the intangibles are coming to effect such as uh, Big Red has a 21-game winning streak on the road, on grass, where there's a tree between <laughs> in the end zone of the, of, it, of the home team. Seven for the Big Red. They got two wide outs. Thompson calls a signal from the line of scrimmage. He's screaming it. There it is. Hand off to Vallejo's again. They can't stop him, Pat. He is unstoppable tonight. Well, Vallejo's just rumbles his way to a close first down. Uh, we were with Vallejo's all day. He seemed really pumped up. I don't think anyone's stopping him tonight. Big crowd here for the Big Red. They brought a few buses out here. And look at them up there. They're filling those visitor stand pretty well for a game that's this far away, Pat. I think everyone has to do their job tonight. The team, the coaches, the subs, the fans. Uh, plus, we got to do our job. I think with all the intangibles, such as the cheerleading stuff, 
we can just distract those cheerleaders a little bit, get them off their game. That might get the Cobras and the band off their game, and uh, that might just give us an extra edge. Playhouse again, up the middle. Coach Owen is just going to go with him until he can't get any more, and, you know, we're looking at fourth and one again. Wad, what do you think they'll do on this play? I think we'll go for it. It's, it's, it's real close. I think we'll go for it because we've held the Cobra off it and because Chris Vallejos, I think we'll be smart and run it to Chris Vallejos this time. It's fourth and one, the Big Red's going for it. The White Creek announcer has been tipping the bottle or something. Uh, he just announced to the whole crowd that he knows Matt Poe's father. That's great and all, but doesn't have much effect on the ball game. That first down, Big Red, Pat, big play. That's true, that was a big play. Uh, the White Creek announcer just announced before the fourth down play that it was fourth down and a small digit. I mean, that's getting pretty witty. I mean, we could say it's first down and a real number right here, an energy, I'm not sure, but we're just going to go with first and ten. Looks reach funny. First and ten, run and shoot offense, Harrison motion. Thompson shows pass, but not. Vallejo's up for one yard to the middle. We're going to have to bury it now. They've got they've got this Vallejo thing pegged. That's true. Vallejo's got pegged for a small digit of yardage there. And um, might be wearing that one out, Pat. Well, yeah, but uh, I think we might come in with our first pass play of the game right here. Look to David Mason or Tate McDaniel. Apparently, Joseph Sitton's starting career did not last very long, Pat, because I just saw... Jeffrey Bitten, Jeffrey Button go off the field, though Sitton may be back in. Button was on for a while. We'll try to keep you updated on that one. Pitch to Harris. He's outside. Get that block. Get that block. Oh, whoever that was, number 45, Robert Eccles missed a block there. Harris could have been gone. Someone attempted to run to the outside that time with Harris. And had there been a block or two, it would have worked. I think Harris is the only one with the speed to get around the outside. D. Thompson didn't like what he saw, called a timeout. Smart play, D. You know, the defense showed new formation. D didn't like what he saw. Yeah, just in the paper, like they said, D's a smart quarterback. He'll throw it out of bounds. He'll call a timeout. He does all the little things. That's just an extra intangible that gives us the edge. See for the mighty red on just about the 48-yard line of the Cobras, Pat. They're uh, set up in the chrome formation. Give to Vallejos. He got a lot. He got a lot. He got seven. First down, Big Red, Alex Waddy. Brian Bleeker is blowing him off the line over on the left side. And Aiden Laura is doing it on the right side. Our line is playing really well tonight. Oh, my gosh. First and ten. Hand off to Harris. He's running hard. Got about five. Made a nice hit on somebody. Guy showed some speed there, Al. Yeah, he had a hole back to the back to the inside. If he'd have got, made it through the initial hole and cut back to the left, could have had a much longer run, I think. And I think we need to go to the air. Here we are. I called it to Harris. Whoa, maybe we should stick to the ground because that, that was a bad pass. He, he overthrew Harris, who was wide open in the flat. Here. The hell. You know, the White Street defense, Defense has been able to key on a running attack. It hadn't done much good for them, but we were just wanting to give them a new look. That's what the play achieved, and uh, look for us to gain a first down right here. What I would like to see is Thompson just to air it out for once. I mean, just to throw it deep, Pat. I'm talking 40 to 50 yards. Wouldn't that be nice? I think that's where the rookie comes into play, and uh, the rookie in the game right now, so I don't think we can be looking for that here. Contrary to popular belief, the rookie supposedly does have a cannon of an arm. Third and seven. Run and shoot offense, Pat. Tate McDaniel in motion. D. Thompson back to pass again. He throws it. He's open. I think he got it, Wad. Oh, it was close. Pat Hale, it was very close. Who was that receiver? That was David Mason. I believe the White Street defender distracted him by jumping in front of him, Pat, and he just dropped that one or it hit the ground first or something. I couldn't quite get the, get the look at it. Yeah, that was a really close play, but uh, there wasn't too much pressure on D. I think just the timing is a little off right now. That his fingers might be a little cold, but uh, look for later in the ball game for Thompson to go over the top D. I'm not so sure, but this might be within Harkle's field goal range, but we go with the punt. It's down to hit, hit, lands at the 10, takes a straight up bounce and rolls down to about the 6. White's Creek in trouble again in their own territory. In back deep in their own territory. They're in the power out there. I think they're just going to run straight at us and 
About five there. Ball up the gut. By the First come out in the power eye. Hand off up the middle. Marvell on the carry again. Marvell Bites. once again Worms. on the carry. Bite Worms. What a dork on the yeah, PA announcer. Off of the Cobras. That might have been a home, home spot, Al. Very well could have been. They're going back to the two split, like the run and shoot formation. They pull the guard. 22 has some running room. He gets about five yards. He did a lot of running, but only about five yards on the game. Run and shoot by the Cobras. Sweep wide. We have him covered. They string it out, but he cuts back. Nice run. We have a flag down. It could be a hole. We can't let him through there like that, Al. There's a flag, but what's going on over there? I don't know. He's, we're, he may just be outrunning us on the corner and then cutting back before he gets to the, the defensive back. It is a hold. That'll push him back 10. It'll be about second and 15, Pat. Well, that's just the kind of play the Big Red needs right now, pushing back in their territory. Hopefully we'll get a punt out of this and uh, we can go down and score. The penalty really helps out the Big Red. The covers were moving the ball for the first time in a while. Nice tackle by... Who is that? Someone. Great tackle by number 57, Aiden Laura. Back got in that backfield, trip the guy up. Great job, Aiden. On that play, Shad, Shad has about two... Has two offensive linemen pull him and, and trying to kick him out, so it really helps when Aiden shoots through the gap and makes the tackle. Totally unimpressed with the White Creek offensive attack thus far in this game, ball game, Al. They have yet to make it into our territory, I don't think. I don't think they have. The, they, are, they aren't doing a very good job of, of running their offense. Their, their running backs are getting them their only yards by themselves. Draw back pass by Cersei. He is killed by Aiden Laura. Is intercepted by Andy Russ, and he's got a lot of room to the touchdown. He could score. Touchdown, Andy Russ. Great. Play. He almost went all the way. That's number two for uh, Cersei or whatever his name is, and he's got to be shaking that off and just keep that chin riding up high a lot. He did go all the way. A lot of the, a lot of the reason for that intercept, the main part of the reason for that interception was. Aiden Lars pressure on Cersei. He had a clear shot at him and had a clear shot at him and you really took it out on him. It looks like someone is hurt down on the sideline. I think Andy Russ is a little hurt. Well, no, that's right, Alex. That play was just a great play all around. Uh, Laura was trying to add to his Metro leading number of sacks and uh, the White's Creek Cobra was trying to air it out, their speed or sour lack of it, but Andy Russ came up with the big play, and I think you're going to find he's fast as anyone out there, so let's hope he's not shaking up on a great play. All right, Pat, Pat Harker Road on for the extra point. Good and it is good. good. Harker Road, good, makes it 7 nothing. big game. That's the first NBA touchdown our defense has scored on an interception. They've led to many scores by the big red, but that's the first one that we've had run back all the way. And Alex. The Big Red, the kickoff team was coming out and they looked really fired up. That was the play they needed to just get the momentum fully their way. It has been, they've been doing a real good job on defense and moving the ball real well on offense. And that, that, that big play on defense just brings it all together and makes uh, the Big Red ready to roll. After that big play, it's really important, it's real important that the Big Red keep a short kick by Hawker Road. That's not what we need. Taken up by an up back, he pitches it back. Nailed by 26, the rook. That's a big play by the rookie, Alex. I think uh, his spaghetti supper sales this week had a lot of part doing that. He's a uh, man's turned straight. He's turned good. And I think we see it on the field. Here comes the rookie back for an encore. He's playing a little defense. Right. Run and shoot again for the Cobras. And off up the middle. About five there. It's, it's a really important defense to stand for the Big Red. They really need to hold them. They can't give uh, the Cobras much, much uh, something for the future. They can't. They can't just let them think they can move the ball. I'm getting mixed up. Waddy, we'll give you a little breather there. I'm not so sure. Hell, is Waddy tipping the bottle before this game? Well, I'm not so sure about that. But what I do know is, along with the White's Creek announcer, who was tipping the bottle, but. Uh, 
Like your announcer said that uh, well, part of that past, it uh, has been the battle between the fullbacks, Marvell and Vallejos. I think Vallejos is winning up to this point, Taylor. Almost broke a big play on that quick pass. We tripped him up, but gosh, he is coming up there with some speed and almost had a big hole, and that could be dangerous, Al. Yeah, it is. We really need to hold him here. We can't give him any sign of the ability to move the ball before going into the half. It's first and ten for the Cobras. Three and a half minutes left in the half. Split formation. Pitch to 25. Almost tripped up, but no. He's out there for maybe a first down, Pat. Cobras line up. Split formation. Two halfbacks. Broken play. Seriously tackled. You got to make a point, number 35, Shad Weaver, and on that tackle. There hadn't been too much emotions on the field thus far, but they got the wild man in the game, and things are going to change. Great spin move by Weaver to circle back and get that guy in the backfield. It's second and nine for the Cobras, just before midfield, about the 47-yard line. They break the huddle, and they're looking for something, Pat, but I don't think they're going to get it. Well, you know, the Big Reds brought in Eric Crawford, the freshie, into the ball game for some new life. I I look <laughs> new defensive formation. What is that, Waddy? One linebacker? What is that? I haven't seen that before. But they hike it and they run up the middle. That leaves so much of a hole up the middle, Alex. I don't understand it. I think we're just putting an extra down lineman and placing the, the, the other linebacker down outside on the, on the strong side of the formation. Seven for the Cobras. Back to the traditional formation. Uh, hike. Quick pass. Oh, he's going to pay on that one. High pass went through his hands, and he almost got stuck. Faust did get a pretty good hit in on him. From getting the ball in our territory. Very important stop of the big red. He must have deflected that or something. Or I guess he kicked off the side of his foot. A really bad kick by their punter. And we're looking at good field position. We might get out and get three or another seven before the end of the half, Pat. One and a half minutes left. We know you're right, Taylor. Number 41, their punter seems to be walking off the field with his head down. Got to just say chin up. That hurts for the covers. Let's go, big red. And again, not a nice hole because he only got about one yard. Really unimpressed with the ball game thus far. We we switched to, I believe that, isn't that the A's game over there, Al? I'm not sure. We switched back over to these fields over here to see some action there. Not the A's game, maybe the Reds game. Maybe. Tackles, gain of five on the play. Number the Cobras are calling timeout, hoping to get the ball back. Big... I'm glad Thompson got the ball back. Uh, that was... We really need a first down to, to give the Cobras no chance of uh, scoring, getting the ball back and scoring. Now they get the ball back, and we'll have to see if our defense can stop them again. Parker Road back to kick. Pat really needs to get off a good kick here. Kind of a high snap. Kind of off the side of his foot. We get a good bounce. The guy picks it up and, and oh, beats one tackler. There's a flag down. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a clip or a hold on the Cobras. 55 is looking down the flag. <laughs> he can't believe it. Yes, it is yellow. It is a flag. It means you're penalized. Penalty right there. Pushes Cobras back even further on their own territory. Less of a chance to score now. 30 seconds left in the game. Cersei drops back. The out route There's incomplete for the Cobras. Big Red is in white coverage, which is a prevent coverage, so the Cobras don't get a quick score here before the half. With passes like that, they're not going to get much. Half is running down slowly. Cersei's dropping back. She's a guy over the middle. Makes the catch. Big red defenders surround them. He is tackled. The Cobras, it, it, through this first half, have not crossed the big red side of the field. The big red leads seven to nothing. They have to go into into the locker room. Very happy, very up, and I'm looking for a good second half. Pat, that's true, Alex. I think thus far. The NBA has proved the White's Creek number five mid-state triple-A ranking to be not. Are we on? Are we on? Are we 
got the White White's Creek Marching Spirit Band. We got a little You Can't Touch This, MZ Hammer. Well, I hate to tell you, but NBA did touch it in the first half. They were all over the White's Creek offense. White's Creek couldn't do anything. This marching band has been touted by the Tennessean. It's one of the top bands in the country. Uh, that's a little bit better than I can say for their football team right now. Alex. You can see all the moves by the marching bands, the majorettes, and a uh, man in a trench coat over there. They got a little bit more than their football team's gotten going so far, and uh, I think this has a negative effect on the uh, White's Creek uh, fans, as a matter of fact, because uh, they got rhythm anyway, and uh, this kind of... Oh, hold on. People are now laughing at NBA because we don't have a band. Maybe I was wrong. The White's Creek fans are getting fired up. But uh, I think this might ignite the NBA band, give them a little spirit, a little rhythm. Halftime show, we got the spirit band out there. Right now we're here live with Charlon and Susan. Uh, girls, tell me a little bit, what do you think your job is during the game? To lead the crowd and bring it up the spirit of the um, team and to stop the crowd and booing so I can stop them from booing. Uh, maybe so. I've been looking at the uh, signs y'all made up. Banish Big Red, Bleach Big Red, Beat Big Red. I don't know what y'all had. Y'all have to. Y'all seem to have an infatuation with B words. Tell me about that. Well, uh, we just think of phrases that uh, mess with the tool. Like rhyming phrases, sort of. Yeah. Also, like. Like, 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 beat the creek or something. Beat, beat the creek. No. no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I know. Well, uh, so far in the first half, I've gotten the uh, students and the uh, everyone else fired up, but the team didn't seem to be too fired up. Tell me a little bit about that. What do you think you're going to do in the second half to uh, change things around? Try to kick butt. Try to kick butt. Start a lot of crowd cheers. Yeah, get most a lot of the crowd. To How are you going to do this? Good luck, girls. I think you got something good going here. Uh, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> got a White Street graduate here. What's your name, sir? Jabari Martin. Uh, okay, Mr. Martin. Uh, what do you think about the game so far? So far, it looks like we're in bad shape. We're down seven nothing. I did, I just got here, so I hope we're going to the air. So far. Well, we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back. Yes, my name is Ray. I went there too. You got high school here? Yes, I went here for my love grade. Why'd you leave White Creek? Well, I felt I needed a better soundly academic program, so my parents sent me to Tallahassee, Florida. But I feel that we're gonna come back in this half and rally back to Israel. Okay, that's uh, pretty profound stuff. Uh, were you on the football team when you went to White Street? No, I, I should have. You might have won the state one of the years when I would have played. Is that right? So you, got, you got some pretty good moves? Yeah, but I hear NBA has a good team this year, y'all. It's 6-0. Yeah, we're 6-0. Did oh. you see NBA score that touchdown? It was That was a bomb. No, we got an interception right in the back. Oh. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit, uh, what do you do with your spare time these days? Well, right now I'm attending school at Tennessee State University trying to get a degree in engineering. And I come to here on my spare time, you know, out of school. I start going to watch games. Uh, thank you. What? Uh, the Red Sox seem to have gotten, like Boston. Boston got beat the other night. I think another team that this man supports, White's Creek, they're going to get beat tonight. Notre Dame got beat. Syracuse, uh, they, beat they beat Vanderbilt. That doesn't count, but. New York is number one. I'm from New York. Syracuse, they have no football. NYU, Columbia, Fordham Prep, everything. Can y'all make up a rap or something for us real quick? Uh, I can. New York, New York. I will, I will. A place to be. I will. 
He won't come back until about the end of the game, Wad. What do you think? That's probably a good guess. He was just fixing his hair. He's probably trying, we'll trying to scam on some women. He tried, he tried to trick us and, and get us to say that he's going to talk at the Cobra cheerleaders, but, but we know he's wrong. He has spent five to ten minutes uh, primping before he we went over there, so it's obviously that he has uh, alternate uh, reasons for going over there, Wad. Second half at seven to nothing, big red. A little bad news to start off with. As Harris ball was upon Andy Russ is uh, out. Oh Harris! Oh, he went a long way. If he'd have come off one more block, he could have been gone for the first run back of a kickoff for a touchdown of the year. However, what I was saying was Andy Russ on that touchdown interception run back broke his collarbone and will not return for the rest of the season, if I'm correct. I ragged him this week about fair catching all those punts and everything, so I think he, he just proved himself that he could run a kickback. Great run by Harris. First and 10, big red on the Cobra 46-yard line. Thompson, handoff to Vallejos up the middle. They can't stop him tonight. He got five yards on that carry. He's seen a lot of action tonight. Second and six for the big red. Wishbone formation. Thompson screams the signals. Back. Hand off to Weaver. He didn't get much. Maybe one, maybe two. It's third and five for the big red. It's a big play right here. Could get us in field goal range. Pitch to Eccles. They obviously scouted, scouted our squad and they met him right there. We're going to have to punt. Fourth and eight, low snap. Hawker Road gets off a pretty nice punt. That's going to get a good bounce, and it does. Down that, down that. Great down. Down on the one-yard line. Great play by, I believe, Shad Weaver. Let me see. By number 35, Shad Weaver. Ball on the one-yard line. That's an outstanding play, Alex. It really is. It looked like it was going to take a good bounce for us, and then, all, and then it came close to going in the end zone. Shad Weaver made a good play by throwing it back, and we downed it on the one. It would be really, really good for the big red if we could get a safety out of this. Looks like he gets about one, maybe. I don't think he got out to the three or the four. I think it, that, here's Taylor. It's the third time the Cobras have got the ball inside the 10 yard line, I believe, this game. It's really hard to get something going offensively when you're coming out of so deep, coming so deep from your own territory. And that's created a problem for them tonight. Ball's on the two. Cobra's playing, uh, playing real tight. That could be all sides on the Cobras. If it is, it moves them back to the one again. Makes it second and ten once again. And gives another good chance for the safety. This will move back. Cobra's in the power aisle once again. Going to try to just push this out of the way. No, they run outside. 
almost break it for, for a long game, but he's tackled after about a four-yard gain. Once again in the power eye, they're on the student body right again. Not much there, maybe about two or three. Big Red's going to send Bob Bartholomew along with a few other Big Red players in to build up the defense. Sending in those people for a punt return, and the cover's pinned deep. I think it was partially blocked, and Harris is going to pick it up and try to run with it. He doesn't have much room. Cuts it back and just gets all he can. Knocked down at about the 42-yard line. Good field position for Big Red. Covers has yet to get anything going offensively, Alex. They're playing total defense, just trying to keep us from blowing them out. They're just not very impressive tonight. The defense looks very good tonight. It's for the Big Red, getting the ball in such good field position. We need to do something with it here. We drop back for a pass. See Tate open. He's got a lot of room. Cuts it back. There's a flag down. It could be holding. Could be holding. No coverage in the secondary on Tate McDaniel by the Creek defense. We may have holding. Yes, we do. That hurts, Alex. That really nullifies a good play. It does nullify a good play, but we have something that we know can work in the passing department, and that, that builds up these confidence. 20 for the Big Red. They give the run and shoot. They got a blitz. And he trips over someone. That's, good. That's really tough for the Big Red. That'll put him in a second and very long situation. Uh, and also just hammered D. Said that D dropped back to pass and tripped over the 50-yard line. I'm not so sure that's called for a watch. I think we started this drive on the 42. Have run one actual play. And we're on our own 48. Not a good sign for the Big Red. Second 28. Chrome formation. We need a big play here. Hand off off the middle of Shad. Oh, he's got a lot of room. He's got some speed. He goes down to about the 30. Big play for the big red. Nice running by running by Shad. That announcer might just want to chew on that little run right there, Waddy. He, he got a little caught up right there after he got through the line of scrimmage, but broke free and just pr pretty much embarrassed the White Creek defense, Al. Shad has, uh, Chris Wales has been, has been bullying off the middle most of this game. They put Shad in, has a little more speed, twist and turn, and use that speed to get down to the 30. Now we can go back to our regular offense. Two backs, D to Shad again. He gets about four more, and it's going to be a third and about three. Third and three, it's pretty em embarrassing. No, it's fourth and three, isn't it? It's pretty embarrassing for NBA to be second and 30 and get down to have it fourth and six. We're, I believe we're going to kick this one, aren't we? We're going for a field goal. Pat Hall goes off the field goal. We are going for a field goal, and I think we can kick it. This is within Pat's range, 43 yards. That's, that is, this will be as long as for the year, but it is within his range. The kick is long enough, and it is good. Pat Hawker rode with a 43-yarder. Look at him point. Look at him point. He was pointing to the Cobras. He was saying, bring it, bring it. Uh, they can call Pat on that one. Uh, he just pretty much drained a 43-yard field goal. Didn't have too much distance to give there, Watt. It, was, it just barely made it, but, you know, he's the best kicker in the state. He knows he can make a 43-yarder, so I don't think he was using the whole leg. He wanted to make sure he got it through the upright. Makes the a, makes a score 10 to nothing for the Big Red. It looks like we've come out real fired up in this second half, and we're doing a real good job throw it on the kickoff of the Big Red after that nice 43-yard field goal. I still have yet to see the rookie Chris Johnson make his pass. I'm still looking for it, though, Watt. High-hanging kick by Hawker Road. The rookie with a clear shot. Oh, but he stacked up at about the 25. Rookie almost had a clear shot, but he outran him. 25, 26-yard line. The formation with two splits. Pass. Wide open in the flat is number 88. He stumbles and goes down about the 45. Pass rush on that last play. I think we didn't. We also didn't have coverage in the in the flat. Our linebacker didn't quite make it out. Shad plays it real well. 
Falls on to him. They have no gain on the play. Chief formation for the Cobras. Drops back to pass Aiden Laura. A lot of pressure. Almost intercepted. Almost a nice tackle by Shad, but it was an incomplete pass. Great pressure by Aiden Laura. Got all in that quarterback's face, and he threw it a little high. Incomplete. He wants to. He wants to further that uh, sack count. That excuse me. He wants to increase the, the, his amount of sacks. He he does lead the mid state. Aiden putting more pressure on. Searcy gets outside, but stumbles. Tripped up by Brian Bleeker. Nice play, Brian. Searcy couldn't get outside. The Big Red defense came to play tonight, Wad. The, the Cobras have yet to make it past the WC in the middle of the field. And what a beautiful WC that is, I might add. Are you? <laughs> I can't see it. This was a nice one, though. Glenn fields it, fumbles it, and it's tackled about the 15. There's a flag. Looks like it could be a late hit on the Cobras. What is Harris's deal? He can't catch the ball. He just dropped the past two. Last time he dropped that one, got lucky and made an awesome return, so nobody said anything about it. But I've had enough. Why well, do you need to quit dropping that ball? We'll get Fuqua in there and let him catch it. I'll talk to him about it this week, but the Cobras may be getting a little frustrated over there. 10 nothing. Uh, over the 10 nothing score at this point, Pat. Well, I come back from a summit. I don't know what Harris's deal is, but the NBA crowd certainly doesn't have a deal. You can't visually see the perspective of the NBA crowd, but uh, they're pretty fired up out there. I talked to the cheerleaders, told them some of the Whites Creek cheerleaders' motives, and uh, we got them going, we got the students going, we got the parents going, and we're going to damn the creek. Really, really help gets us out of a jam. Puts us on about the 32-yard line, which is a lot better start than the 17. Hand off to Eccles, bounces outside. Gain of about five. They were looking for Eccles. I mean, looking for Vlaos up the middle. He didn't have it. Bone formation for the Big Red. D calls the signals. D keeps it. Sees a gap. Cuts back. Nice play. Cuts back again. Cross midfield. Down about the 48. Nice running by D. Great, great job of D to just kind of stiff on that one guy, get him out of his way to cut back to the middle panel. I'd say D gets an A on that play, Taylor. Nation. D was again the keeper. Oh, drops back a pass. Harker is wide open. No. Oh. Almost intercepted, but he dropped. I hate that for that guy. He just kind of slipped it right through the old fingertip. Nice play. I like that look of that play. That was a, that was a nice play. Uh, Pat was open. I don't think D let him enough. He, he didn't get it out there far enough. He should have laid it up and let Pat run under it. Almost caused of an interception. M NBA to the Eccles. He gains five. He gains six. They stand him up. Down to around the yeah, they're playing four. I like that call, the drop back pass after the fake option. But uh, the NBA community seems to be pretty high on Harker Road right now, as he was the one going out for the pass. I think they need to give Harker Road leg a little rest, get him ready for some more game-winning field goals, and get the rookie out there. As the third quarter comes to a close, with a score, NBA 10, White Creek 0. Third quarter. Winding up, Big Red with a 10-0 lead, moving the ball. Looks like it could be a victory for the Big Red. The Big Red with two backs. Hand off to Vlaos up the middle. He has a big hole, still going. Twist down to about the 30-yard line. What a bull. What a moose. What more can you say about Chris Vallejos tonight? They've given him the ball a lot, and he's responded with just true greatness, Pat. That's true. Vallejos has shown some toughness tonight. The big red just crunching up the yards in the middle. But, uh... Oh, but, uh, this camera crew has, uh... Accomplish what we've set out to do. I think we've taken the cheerleaders out of the game with our halftime interview with them, and uh, therefore the student section's out of the game, the team's out of sync. Whoa. Except for that. <laughs> Definitely except that play. I think our line, besides that play, before that play, has been doing a great job over on the right, right side, especially Aiden Laura over there. He's 
Sanchez, the Dirty Mexican, is just removing people out. And there have been some great holes over on that right side. Sanchez, all the same thing to me. Chris Blaus, another big hole. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. I say we throw it to Chris. That's what he needs to just make this game just complete. He needs a touchdown. He hadn't scored one all year just simply because they don't give it to him in goal line situations for some unknown reason. I say we give him a touchdown. What do you think, Pat? Well, I say we do too, Taylor. But uh, the offensive line, they're doing a great job. But uh, in the fourth quarter, you know, you, your legs start getting weary. I think we need some freshness in there. I see the house roaming the sidelines. Number 76 once in the ball game. What do you have to say about that, Alex? No. D with the keeper, he's got some room. Tried to put a move on uh, D. I don't think that'll work out here. No, my. 42 yard attempt by Pat Harkle Road. If we make this, this is this is calls them, make them score, make them score two touchdowns for the win. Long enough. Pat Harker Road, the 42 yarder, get him, get him. Once again, Tawny, the White Creek sidelines. That makes it two. That makes the uh, White Creek Covers have to score two touchdowns to uh, win this ball game. He, 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 ABC. For NBA, Harker Road makes that kick an easy tray. Uh, Pat just brings those out from nowhere. We don't know where he gets them. He must practice those before a game. He, 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 ABC. Hawker Road makes that an easy three. Oh, B-I-G-R-E-D, roll red. Roll red, roll. And it's into the end zone. Number eight, eight isn't going to touch that, buddy. Send it on home with your tube socks and all. For the White Creek Cobras, they still have yet to make it past the 50-yard line. He's back to pass. He's got an out pattern over here. He doesn't see it, but he sees that guy. Nothing doing across the middle, Waddy. He missed number three, open for that out pattern. Faust, I believe, just got schooled on that pattern. I'm not sure. He did do, He did miss the receiver, but Harris made a late break on that, or he could have had his second interception of the game. Second and ten for the Cobras after that incompletion. 9.40 left in the ball game. They're going to run the same out pattern, Waddy, and it works again. That's awful. How can that work twice in a row? Put the split backfield. Seem to have some confusion. A couple wide outs. Tight end. A couple tube socks. We seem to have a uh, poet up in the press box with us. He has uh, made up his own ballad of White's Creek. One, two, Blay Host is coming. <laughs> Blay Host is coming for you. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Man, we got the ballad of White's Creek. One, two, Blay Host is coming for you. Three, four, you ain't gonna want no more. Five, six, you're in a tough fix. Seven, eight, it's too late. Nine, ten, you won't win again. True words of wisdom from Pat Hale. It doesn't get any better than that. Intercepted. Oh, that's Joe Underwood. Touchdown, I'm going. He could go all the way. Six. Go Underwood. Uh, the White's Creek. As I was saying, it's around Halloween time. We came out with the Freddy Krueger rendition of the Ballad of White's Creek. But as I was saying, 5-6, White's Creek, you're in a six, and give Joe Underwood a big six. 19 to nothing, Big Red, after that. I called it. I saw that ball floating across the middle. Joe Underwood, that's as good as his right there, Hale. He ran it all the way in with true speed. Give him six. Harker Road on for the PAT. Their quarterback just lofted it up. Their, the back was flaring out of the backfield. Joe Underwood saw it. The pass was overthrown. And Joe Underwood intercepted it for a touchdown. Harker Road with the kick makes it 20 nothing. Big Red. I want to take this time to compliment Jeffrey Bunton. He's done a great job snapping for the Big Red tonight. No bad snaps tonight. Coming off kind of an off week last week against Ryan. Kind of a bad game for him. But he's back. He's ready to play. And he's snapping really well. Chris Johnson just tossed, tossed it a White Creek, White Creek Coba. He better watch out on this kickoff. 
Uh, the crowd seems to be ignited by that oh. Joe Underwood. Oh. Touchdown. Parker oh. with the kick. G R E D roll. Oh. Touchback. Chin up. Number 88, I'm not sure. He pulled his team socks up some more. I think he uh, might get one out of the end zone, but we'll have to wait and see on that. <laughs> First and 10. Coach Neergaard just made a good call. We've got two touchdowns, both from our defense, and two field goals. Oh, intercepted Joe Underwood, Underwood again. How much better can it get for the Big Red? And number 55, you want none of Joe after that's his second interception of the game. You just keep that chin up, just bow that back, because we're schooling y'all. Joe is coming to play this half pat. What, a few words? And a few words. I mean, that's no ordinary interception. That's the second interception for Joe. That's no ordinary Joe Underwood either, Pat. No, sir. Alex. There's 55. I think he just needs to keep that chin up. Chin up there, 55. It'll happen again. The uh, assembly. Pep talk from former Big Red ball player Fred Fisher seems to have ignited the Big Red tonight, Pat. It's 20 to nothing. Seems like White's Creek scored how many points on Hillwood Walk? Scored six. Well, I don't think they're going to get any on us unless we put the scrub D and they just kind of get one towards the end of the game like they did against Hillwood. But, you know, for right the Big Red keeps up the winning streak, Hillwood NBA looks like a tough matchup on down the road. Once again, you have to look at the important uh, incident, the important events in this game. Cersei has four interceptions, and they have yet to cross the Big Red to the Big Red side of the field. Well, you know, Taylor, in the spirit of Joe Fisher, as he said, both Whites Creek and NBA put on their pants in the same fashion. That may be true, but I don't think it can be true for their underpants. If something is definitely rubbing the Whites Creek Cobras the wrong way tonight. <laughs> One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, five, six. The White Creek's gonna have to order a package of Crew X because they got <laughs> they got problems tonight. Second and eight for the Big Red, threatening to score once again. Shad, we run the outside. He's good. Go all the way back. Yes, Zach Weaver. Jump up there, climb the tree, do something. Oh my gosh, it's 26 nothing. Shake that off, Creek. Waddy. He has stuffed it into the end zone. Great run by Shad. He bounced it outside. No defenders were out there. High stuffed it into the end zone. Looked like Walter Payton there. The only thing missing from this game so far to me is a touchdown by the real hero, Chris Vallejos, the hero of our offense tonight. Again, the Big Red defense comes through with a big play that leads to a touchdown. It's 26 high snap, 27 nothing. It doesn't affect Harker Road a bit, Pat. Right. right now, the score is 0 to 20 season. But no, the score is not even. The teams are not even. Nothing's even tonight. The Big Red is just outclassing everyone, everything, every intangible, every cheerleader, every band member, every pep club. Importantly, this game's a little boring over here, so we thought we'd go to the Reds-Boston game. Oh, looks like Eric Davis. Oh, he's up. Oh, he caved. But the Reds are up. And the Reds are up, and it looks like they will go into the series. I just, I got good stuff. I started ringing that. Go hell on. ABC, NBA, BIG, RED, Roll Red, Roll Red, Roll. We're a little off sync on that. But the kickoff team is not off sync. We got some hammers out there. All right, we, we seem to have a, a big WC painted in red outlined with blue in the middle of the field at the 50-yard line. Most people think it stands for White's Creek. I think it stands for Who Cares. That's the way the team, the whole attitude's been tonight. Uh, so you can see on this drop back pass, interception, I saw it coming. I think it was the worst pass he's thrown tonight. It hit the fence over here, and, and he's, he's really frustrated. Israel almost had that last pass. Seriously. 
hoping for something good to happen here. Drops back, big rush, big hit by David Mason. I think he could have cut under and made an interception, but we don't want to embarrass him too bad. I think Winfrey would take that back. He got hit tremendously on that. Mason wisely just waited for the guy to catch it, then took him down to prevent him breaking any kind of long game, considering the fact that it was third and 25 or second and 25. Now it's third and 14, so we're, we're very unthreatened by the creek on this drive. Smart play by David Mason. Running to you by the White Creek Cobras. Shad Weaver comes to the wide side of the field. Seriously drops back. Big rush. Big stick by Shad Weaver. The ball is caught. Nice catch by number 86. Down to about the 46-yard line. The Cobras are threatening our 50-yard line. So, uh, once again, they're running the shoot. The Cobras trying to get something going here. Big pass rush. Ray Brooks almost has him. Todd Fouts comes up. He's ready to put a big hit on, but uh, there was an Aaron pass by Searcy. He started Kyle Smith in the defense. Get a little junior leadership in there, get him ready for next year. Oh, that's number three. Kyle Smith comes up with a big play. He caught it around the first down mark and then ran backwards, thus not getting the first down. That takes some intelligence to do that one. We got a new formation here, a new site or idea by the Big Red defense. We are now walking Ray Brooks out on the wide receiver to try to hold him up, and then he is rushing. It's getting the White Street Cobras a little problem. So far, they've been able to handle it. Johnson and Fowles told number three not to come back on the field. He uh, defied them, and uh, let's look for that to be a key matchup in the late stages of the ball game. White Street going to pro set. Seriously back to pass. Seriously back to pass to number three. No, no, no. And a subplot from the game. The uh, White Creek marching band seems to be getting a little antsy. There's a lot of movement. <laughs> the bigger end is giving a big cushion on the defenders. That's why they're they're having a lot of a lot of openings underneath. Seriously takes a snap, drops back, looks to his left, screen pass to number 34. Mason pushes him out of bounds around the 33-yard line. 33, I said. 33-yard line. Let's see where they mark. Thank you. Again, White Creek lines up in split formation. Under center to Searcy. Gets a snap. Quick throw to number three. Interception! Oh! Number 22, number five, Faust is getting in on the act. Todd Faust with another interception. I don't know how many that is this season. He had some against White Creek. Uh, I mean, against Warren Central. If he would not have tripped over his own player, I think he would have had six. Tough break for Todd Faust. That's number five for old Cersei. And uh, I hate that for the Cobras, Waddy. It's 27 nothing. We're at their place. We're embarrassing them. Pat's giving a hard time. Here he is. You know, Maze, that's got to hurt for the Cobras. And for what I can't believe is... First of all, we got a uh, good play running up the middle. Their uh, marching man, their marching man, seems to keep the pep up and uh, draws miles down into the White's Creek section of supporters. But to tell you the truth, I can't tell whether these people are here sporting the LA Raiders or the White's Creek Cobras. There's the Raider fans. There are the Raider fans. Up the middle, the Joe with the keeper fumble. The covers get it. That, that, that's a problem. With the second team offense in, we had a little mix up. Well, not really. Joe was just stripped of the ball, and we had a little problem there. Trying to set up the screen. NBA plays it well. They can't do it. Looks like it's going to be intentional grounding on Cersei. On Cersei. That's going to move him back 10 yards. Pat. You know, again, I almost had my first uh, varsity catch on that play for an interception. Hoping maybe I can catch one of these, get a varsity letter or something. They're coming close, getting a good shot. I don't know if I can run it all the way back to the end zone, though. On Joe's last fumble, it was a bumble. <laughs> oh, we got the White's Creek. Two halfbacks, Searcy drops back. 
Looks left, looks left, throws left to number three. He's wide open. I don't know what we're going to do about that. On Joe's last fumble, he's still ready to rumble. So hopefully we can get back, get, get him back in there to help crumble and to humble the White's Creek offense. Harris had the interception. He's just being uh, courteous to the number 88. I think he's being courteous to Searcy also. He didn't want to get him up in the double-digit interception. White's Creek again with the last chance effort. Big rush by the Big Red. Hail Mary. Intercepted by Todd Fowl. We have second interception. That makes it. I can't even count. What is that? Six, seven, so That'd be six. Uh, Searcy, you might as well just quit throwing the ball. Where's our second string quarterback? He's just getting embarrassed. He's just he's making him look awful, Waddy. Foul. Second interception of the night. Good job, Todd. That makes Todd, Todd and Joe both have one interception and huh? I mean, they have two interceptions, excuse me. The ball is on our own one-yard line. We're pinned back. We don't want to give the covers any points right here on safety. you got to be smart. All right, NBA lines up in their own end zone. <laughs> the quarterback sneak for Joe. Quarterback sneak by Underwood. That last interception for Marcus Searcy, that was number five. That ain't no job. And now it's time for NBA to drive. And <laughs> that was six, so uh, just nullify all that. Pat's getting a little carried away with his uh, poetic license. And uh, it's second and about eight, seven maybe. He needs, I mean, Joe needs a little breathing room back here, Alex. I think he does. Give it to the rookie. Rookie will get you some breathing room around the outside with that speed. Or just give it to Joe and pound it out to about the five-yard line. I'm calling it right here, the rookie pass, Swatty. I'm calling it. Okay, here we got another bone formation. Hand off. Short of the first down. Gets it out to about the six. Pat Harker Road will be coming in for the field goal. Pat Harker Road with the kick. Fair catch called. He drops it. And they're looking for a penalty, the White Creek fans are, but I don't think they'll get it. I have to excuse Pat Hale on that camera. He missed the first half of that punt. Searcy under, no, not Searcy. That number, uh, number uh, 12 and uh, not a good pass. Little off target. I think he needs about uh, 12 more years to get ready for this. Eight seconds left in this game. I just want to say that Joe Underwood has been really impressive at quarterback tonight. He's done a real good job. Weiss Creek, once again, the run and shoot. Try a quick shot with the catch, about 10 yards. That keeps the clock running. Big Red really needs to hold the Cobras here and shut them out. You know, like tens and tens of spectators seem to be falling out of the stadium this time. There's still 30 seconds left in the game. It's just 27 nothing with this high-powered Cobra offense. Anything could happen. True. Number 12 calls the signals, drops back, tries another quick shot, incomplete. The quarterback was right on that one. That could be the last play of the game. Could not because of incompletion. Thursday. Thursday, not Friday, Thursday. Looks like a Hail Mary to three. He goes out of bounds. That makes it, a, that gives the Cobras a first down. There will be one last chance effort for the Cobras. Six seconds left, down 27 to nothing. Five seconds remaining in this game. Cobra, quarterback drops back. He looks deep. Hail Mary. Touchdown! Touchdown! That sucks! It does! Just like against Hillwood, they score on the last play of the game. Makes it look like they played with some poise and, and some good effort, but they really didn't. Kind of a bad play to end the game on, but uh, it's been fun to bring you this game. It's 27-6 to 6 route. 
of the Cobras on their own field by the Big Red. We're signing out. Fight! Fight! Hold on. All right, the Big Red. The Big Red had a very balanced attack. A very good offense. Very good defense with six interceptions, two touchdowns on defense. Two field goals on offense along with the touchdown. Played a really good ball game. We're really fired up. And we just looked.